Hey everybody and welcome back. Uh, today we are going to be breaking down the second round submission that Nazim Zadikov hit over Terrence McKinney this past weekend at UFC Fight Night. Uh, so as always, I'm going to caveat this by saying, right, I feel like redundant giving this intro, but I am a blue belt, right? Like I am analyzing the stuff and trying to portray to you guys what I feel is going on based on my own knowledge, which is lacking in comparison to a lot of people who practice the art of grappling, MMA, etc. right out in the world. So Keep that in mind, and by no means am I ever saying that I could get out of these positions, right? My goal is just to take what happened, articulate it to an audience, and hope that you guys gain some sort of understanding about grappling that maybe you didn't before, right? Especially for people who are like amateurs and, you know, whatever. So I always like to give that little caveat. I by no means am saying that I could get out of these situations if I am put in them. I'm just trying to look at mechanically, right, what's happening, and instances where I feel that fighters are making mistakes and other fighters are capitalizing on those mistakes. So with that being said, if you guys enjoy the breakdown, please do me a huge favor, hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, all that good shit that we're required to ask you guys to do. And uh, yeah, let's hop into it. Thank you guys again. All right, so we're gonna pick things up about 25 seconds into the second round here. And honestly, McKinney kind of dominated throughout the first round with his positioning and stuff, right? Had the back of Sadikov. And one thing I want to point out before we get started is I feel like McKinney has really good timing on his level changes, but a lot of the times he doesn't run his feet through the shot, meaning like, okay, we're going to see here, right? Sadikov is stepping in with this big left uppercut, and you're going to see that McKinney slips his head inside nicely and changes levels. Look at the timing on that. I mean, it doesn't get better than that, but... He's flat-footed, his base is really wide, and he's just dipping straight down. There's no penetration into Sadikov, right? He needs to kind of penetrate into that space between Sadikov's leg here with his lead leg. He doesn't do that, though, and it also doesn't help that Sadikov stepped into the shot hard, so when his hips meet the shoulder of McKinney, he kind of stuffs this, right? It's an easy shot for him to stuff. Again, McKinney's got to run his feet through impact there, right? Anyway, uh, Sadikov gets to a strong whizzer. Right, they circle up against the cage here. Sadikov does a nice job of framing right on the fucking throw to McKinney there. Getting distance, and now McKinney's reversed things, though. He's got Sadikov behind the black line. Terrence is going to reach out with the jab. And then, again, great timing, right? He gets the hands of Sadikov moving up. Level changes, but his head is going, like, down into the outside, right? I think that if he penetrates straight into Sadikov instead of dipping his head off to the side and trying this kind of trip... He gets to the hips and maybe gets a double leg and completes this. So little things. The timing's all there. Just stuff to clean up, right? Anyway, Sadikov does a great job of recognizing this, stuffing the head, getting off to an angle, and he starts stepping around behind McKinney here. And here's where we start getting a little bit of like, eh, what do you do? He grabs the fence, and in a situation like this, it's giving him clear leverage to readjust his foot positioning, right? He's grabbing onto it. It's preventing McKinney from turning the corner. So it's making it hard for McKinney to do anything here. It gives him an unfair advantage. Peterson clears it once and he posts his hand, but you're going to notice, look how the finger starts folding in immediately. Look, give it a few seconds. There goes the index finger and everything else is going to follow after. He closes all of his fingers inside it. To me, guys, we're going to break the rest of this down. To me, this is an immediate point deduction and stand it back up. I know he's in dominant position and you don't want to take it away from him, but there's a good argument, right, that they're in a scramble position here. And if McKinney is able to scramble without Sadikov taking an unfair advantage here, maybe he gets out of it. Maybe he fucking doesn't, but maybe he does. And that unknown to me, like right here, this is egregious. You're like, come on, seconds. Seconds of holding the cage. And now, by the time McKinney gets his grips and repositions, Sadikov has, has, has time to prepare for it. He takes a cross face on this side right here. And again, we're going to pick it up and keep breaking it down. But McKinney, do you guys see how he's maybe opened up an opportunity to start dumping Sadikov towards us? Or maybe up towards the top or bottom right corner of our screen this direction? The cage is going to make that difficult, though. And again... Good argument that Sadikov is able to maintain position here because of the cage grab. Anyway, notice that Sadikov has a cross face and he's almost in a position with one arm in and one arm out where he could start looking for maybe an inverted triangle. But Sadikov is actually going to respond to this really well. And I think that as McKinney starts to shove him forward here, you're going to see, we mentioned the cage. Notice how they run into it. McKinney kind of runs out of room. 
Sadikov is going to use this uh, to his advantage. He starts posting on that arm, getting his weight going in that direction. And he's going to start building up tension in his legs by moving his feet away from each other. You guys see that? How he's extending his legs out? That's going to clear the grip on this side. And now that he's cleared the grip, he's going to start scissoring his legs toward each other and building up tension against the face of McKinney. This is going to let him take a big back step out and maintain top position. Notice he's winning the head height battle here. From here, we get into a situation where I think McKinney would be better suited to continue playing from the side. All right. So we saw this in John Jones versus Cyril Gaon. And the problem when you start getting flat on your butt and your back is flat up against the cage, it's really easy for your opponent to create separation between your knees and your elbows. And then your elbows, or I'm sorry, your knees start drifting farther and farther, right? Down away from your chest, etc. right? It all starts compounding. And because your, your opponent is in a position where they're very mobile, their head's over top of yours, so they can start threatening to clear your knee line and attacking this guillotine, like I said, like we saw John Jones do against Cyril Gaon right? So this is a very difficult position to play from when your back is flat on the cage because again, you're creating separation between your knees and your elbows and it's very easy for your opponent to start being mobile here and changing his height and you're kind of pinned. I feel that your best bet is to start getting to a side, playing from a hip and looking to build your base back up underneath you using angles, right? And wall cage walking that way. From here, it's going to be very tough. I think McKinney, again, go to the right or left, keep your elbows and your knees connected so he doesn't pass, but he doesn't do that here. And not that he doesn't, maybe he just doesn't have time because of the pressure of Sadikov. I mean, this is well played, right? But again, notice that in order for McKinney to keep attachment to the upper body, his hands start drifting up. He looks for the underhook, but look what happened, guys. Knees and elbows are separated. So it's easy, right? Again, for all Sadikov has to do is scoop underneath that arm. And once he clears the knee line, he just flattens McKinney right in the mount. So do you see how that dilemma there presents a lot of problems? Now, once we get here, this is where McKinney's going to make a big mistake. Notice his arm right here on this side. This is important. That arm needs to come out and shoot fist first across the hips of Sadikov to the far hip and create a frame. Do you guys see how it's trapped on that side right now? McKinney is going to start building up to his elbow here without any sort of frame in place. Okay? And when you do that, you have no barrier between yourself and your opponent's hips. There's nothing stopping him from climbing up into high mount. So when McKinney starts building up to this elbow with that underhook on the far side, right, with his arm on the wrong side and no frame in place, it's easy for Sadikov to get this Dagestani handcuff here or this wrist ride, right, and he can start getting his chest and his hips going forward, and in the process, because he's flattening McKinney down to the mat, right, down belly down, and his arm's trapped on that side, again, he didn't frame, McKinney has no ability to get his arm back in play, and as he gets flattened, it gets pinned behind his back. Notice that McKinney, he's kind of doing the right things here. Notice how he starts stepping over top of that leg and capturing it. If he has a frame in place right here, guys, he's in play. He can start elevating that knee, trying to capture the knee line, and then getting an underhook on this side and turning into Sadikov. But because he's in this position where his arm was on the wrong side and he built up to that elbow prematurely, he's trapped, right? And when you get a high-level guy like Sadikov who sees this stuff, Trains with guys like Sterling, you know, he's going to have a high-level jiu-jitsu game. Anyway, again, Sadikov, right, he gets that wrist ride, hips and chest comes forward, and he flattens McKinney out over that shoulder. Now, again, McKinney steps over like we mentioned, but notice how Sadikov turns that into a hook. This is going to benefit him greatly here in a second because notice that Sadikov's left arm right now is kind of committed to trying to attempt the choke on McKinney, right? McKinney could theoretically start building his base up and dumping Sadikov over this left shoulder of his right here because he doesn't have anything to post with. He's committed this, this to the strangle, so there's no post out in this direction. But because Sadikov has sunk this hook in right here, as he extends that leg out and back, you're going to notice that he kind of falls to his left shoulder here. You see how he gets off balanced a little bit? But again, McKinney's arm is out of play right now, but he's using this hook as leverage to keep him in place, and he starts climbing his hips back up on top, right, because he has that hook, and he gets right back on the back of McKinney. 
uses that arm that we were talking about. Because of that hook, that arm is free to choke. That's the arm he gets underneath the chin. And he gets the tap here. And I think when your arm's pinned behind your back like that in your McKinney, once he sinks it in, it's like, all right, what am I going to do? It doesn't matter if it's taking me to the point of unconsciousness or not. Like, your arm is pinned there. So, a beautiful win from Sadikov. A little bit of debate with the cage grab. And again, um, just some small things that McKinney was doing wrong that I feel like, you know, uh, might have made a difference in this one. Most importantly, when you get taken down like that, your frame and mounted like that, your frame has to be across the hip. If there's no barrier between you and your opponent, they're going to get to high mount and start threatening with submissions like this, you know, and McKinney got put in a tough spot. But anyway, uh, a lot of promise from these two uh, young prospects and a, a great fight. As always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Much appreciated. If you enjoyed, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, all that good stuff, and I will catch you guys later. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.